Hello, my name is Dimitrios Swiss Lucas and I would like to introduce you to the world of tracing. Many friends ask me what is tracing and what is all about and what are the main benefits of using it. So I'm going to explain this uh, with this quick video. I'm going to use material available on the web and more specifically things from the open tracing website and this uh, little GitHub repo here with an open tracing example. So if we go here on the docs overview, we can see some sections about why tracing, why open tracing, etc. So the main idea is that our complex services today are interconnected and when uh, you need to do a web request or any kind of software interaction, usually this has to go through several services. Uh, it is not the old paradigm of a monolith uh, application. So what you used to be able to do with a debugger uh, now becomes way more difficult since you need to trace one single web request or whatever uh, through several services. And here's an example on the bottom of this page, a client transaction from start to end and you, we can see it going through several different systems, authorization, billing, etc. So the main intuition is we have something like an ID that allows us to uh, correlate different parts of a single transaction. So uh, this typically is something like a trace ID and we can say to our tracing infrastructure, give me everything you know about this transaction. And the relevant infrastructure will be called to collect all this information from different places and compile a little causality tree. So we can see here that this authorization actually span in the open tracing terminology was caused by this blue span uh, which was uh, you know a transaction the load balancer which in turn was caused but by this yellow which is the overall uh, transaction so this is the basic concept of tracing and if we go here on concepts and terminology we will quickly end up on the specification page here we can find more details about the way of thinking, so spans, this is the root span, the top level, uh, it can create different spans on different services and uh, a span might be a child of the uh, span above, so a trace is a, a directed acyclic graph, a DAG of those spans. And all those relationships are identified by different IDs. Uh, there are also spans that follow other spans. This is more for asynchronous stuff. So usually when we think of a span C, we would say that uh, span A should last for longer uh, than span C, since C is a child of A. But when you have this follow relationship, this is not uh, further true. And here we can see exactly this uh, represented in another way. On each span, we can also assign extra info like uh, tags, for example, arbitrary key values. And uh, of course, there are appropriate timestamps that let us know when the span started uh, or stopped. And of course, uh, we can also associate further events that are useful for our application. There's also the context of span context, uh, which is more natural to some languages and less on others. But intuitively, it means that whenever my code is running, it runs within a context. And this context might be associated, for example, with a current thread or coroutine. And uh, so I can easily uh, have uh, indirect access to the current span. Let's try to show a quick example here. Distributed tracing in 10 minutes. A great article by Brandon Gonzalez. And uh, here's his GitHub uh, page. And here we can see we can run his example with a single docker command. So let's do this, uh, docker ps, I'm not running anything, and let's run. So it starts quickly and says, to see your traces, go to uh, this URL. So as soon as we go here, we see a tracing application. This is apt-dash. And uh, effectively what it does is it takes all this information, all those IDs or key values or whatever information we have, and uh, reconstructs the traces in a visual way that we can easily see it. And we can see right now it's empty, so a little bit empty front page indeed. And then the second line of this example says go here to start the request. So what happens when I do that? 
we can see request started done so it is a very fast request and uh, this simulates a real operation in a complex system uh, it's not really happening but we simulate different events uh, for demonstration purposes so if I come back to app dash and I refresh now I can see this trace I click it and here is a visual representation of what happened uh, get home so this is obviously uh, the home page and we see that it uh, creates two different API requests one is get slash service and uh, this as you see it's a child and one which is async and lasts longer than the home uh, request and now something slightly web counterintuitive is that you can right click here and do show children and here as well and you can see database operations so uh, this uh, slash service also uh, perform a get operation in the database and uh, the same for async and of course you can see here sort by start time end time and uh, all sorts of utilities you can also see here export as json which shows us the internal representation uh, of this uh, entire view uh, so we can see here trace id span ids uh, those uh, are different obviously for different tracing implementation but this is what AppDash uh, uses but why is there a need for open tracing the main reason is to save really thousands of hours of effort I can illustrate this with uh, Zipkin another tracing framework like AppDash and within the JavaScript uh, context uh, there are several uh, JavaScript frameworks and uh, of course there are tens of thousands of applications that are built on top of raw JavaScript or by using one of those frameworks now ideally what we try to achieve with open tracing is express to have just a single instrumentation over some abstract open tracing APIs and then any of the applications that are built on top of it will automatically have basic uh, tracing functionality within the application one will be also using uh, open tracing APIs and this means that uh, parts of the application can be reused no matter which tracing framework uh, its application or team decides to use so this is what open tracing uh, tries to achieve it tries to uh, give some base classes that abstract uh, the functionality of a typical tracing framework so that library developers and application developers can uh, build on top of them thus enabling code reuse among thousands of projects regardless of uh, which actual tool a team decides to use uh, for their tracing needs I hope you find this presentation useful thank you very much